All right, guys, so we are here for another episode of Hot Seat. What's, what's amazing, I got my buddy, is it Nicholas or Nick? Which do you prefer? Nick. Nick, are you sure? Yes, sir. You hesitated. You're sure it's Nick? Yeah. Okay, yep. awesome. So thank you, Nick. So what we try to do is get people to understand how to communicate with people. Mm -hmm. Like the word hot seat's weird because people are like, well, am I in trouble? What am I doing? No, dude, I'm trying to get better every day. Yep. Like entrepreneurship doesn't require talent. That's why a lot of people, they start doing well. They're like, look, look how good I am. Like, dude, anybody could do this. So I was just asking, so Nick, how long have you had your life insurance license? Uh, I've had my life insurance license since June of 2023. Got it. All right. How's it going for you? It's been going great. Okay. Going great. Like, how much money do you make in a week? Um, maybe a couple grand. Okay. 30. So, okay. First of all, do you know why I like you and like working with you so much? Do you know? Why? Do you want to guess or do you have any guess at all? Um, I would like to hear what you have to say. You're really smart. You're likable. People like being around you. You seem to genuinely care about clients and you seem to be a good person. Is that a fair statement? Yep. Okay. So I like it. So I, I'll, I'll work hard to try to help them. I don't, I don't, I've never talked to anybody where it's remotely difficult with people I don't like. That would be weird. Mm -hmm. So, but I need you to raise, you have a self-imposed lid on yourself. Because I go, how's it going? You go, great. And do the, I'm not mad at you. How old are you? 22. 22. Do you have any kids? Any big bills? No. No. So if you could make $1,000 a week, it's not so bad. Right? Mm -hmm. It's not a terrible existence. But it's not great. No. Because you look at the people around you and you see what they're doing. It's like, why can't I do what they're doing? Of course. Right? There's people that sell more than you around you. Why do they sell more than you? Um, you know, because they're better. Okay. What do you mean? Why do you think they're better? Uh, maybe they do things a little different. They say things a certain way, maybe that I don't. Uh, okay. And I try to just pick and pick pieces from everyone and learn to make myself better. Okay. They're not better. They're just willing to get more uncomfortable. Like, I, like, I think you're getting there. Like, when you first, because you're so nice. That's the struggle, dude. Like, if you're really overly nice to people, and please, this is so weird. But, like, for me, when you met me, you didn't know me at all. When you met me, did you like me immediately? Yeah, of course okay. I liked you. You, know, you like me. Why would you like me? Uh, I get a good, uh, nice vibe from you. Okay. Do you get uncomfortable around me if I'm talking about stuff? No. No. How come? I don't really get uncomfortable from people. Okay. But why don't you get You know I want to help you. Yeah. There's no way that you don't get uncomfortable. Everybody gets uncomfortable. Yeah. Everybody in the world gets uncomfortable. Like, you used yeah. to come in here and dial all the time, and you stopped coming here and dial because it was loud, right? Yeah. Is it comfortable here when it's loud? No. No. Do you like when people listen to you when you dial? Do you care if they listen to you or not? I would love for you to listen to me. No, but I'm saying people in general. Oh, yeah, of course. Do you care if they're listening to you? No. Do you think you'd do better at home by yourself and not being in a group of people who hold you accountable? Um, for the time I was there, I, I was with Ethan yeah. and Gary, and we were on Zoom together. Yeah. So having them was very helpful, learning a lot from them. Okay. But, you know, I seem to realize coming into the office here around the group of guys, it's good to, you know, just be here with everyone. <coughs> You have to wake up every day trying to find something that makes you uncomfortable. By the way, anybody that tells you, I love dialing in front of people, don't make them uncomfortable, is a liar. Everybody has some little bit of uncomfortableness, some less than others. Now, in most people, like you can't try to pretend to be something you're not either. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? You yeah. can't. It, it doesn't matter what you cannot do that. So for you, you left a, an environment which has a lot of people in it and a lot of excitement shit talking competition which is all good by the way and then you found two dudes who are like they don't want to talk to anybody you found them and then i got three dudes and nobody else so three blind mice there ain't 300 people in there there ain't 40 people in there there's three gary has agents on his team right are they listening to him down some not really not really ethan's hired some agents of the people on his team listen to him down no? How is that successful? Yeah. It's this, I want to build a big business, but I want to do what's right for me. Mm -hmm. When I built the company, when I got my life insurance license, everybody has to come in and dial. Dude, I hadn't even made a dial, but we were all doing it together immediately. Mm -hmm. Everything I did, I wanted somebody to see me do it. Yeah. You have to come in here on a regular basis, not because it's magical, because you're getting around people and going to pick up more shit. Mm -hmm. Because you found two people that don't like people, and I'm not being mean, like they like, but they're just, they like to keep to themselves. If you can tell those two, we're gonna live on an island, and they're like, I got food and something to watch on my phone, they're chill. Me, I lose my mind. 
Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to go to prison and be away from all these amazing things outside the prison walls. I The rest of it, I don't really don't give a shit about. Yeah. I just don't, I want, I want to be around people. I want to have life experiences. I want to go do stuff. They don't care. But you have to also find a way to be quicker. Mm -hmm. Quicker, 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 quicker. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're very calculated in your responses. I'm not. And then you go to say something, and I say something over you, which is what clients will do to you. And same thing with people. Are you recruiting agents to work with us? Attempting. Attempting. I, need to, I need to do a better job. God, what are you not doing good at? Uh, just not, you know, explaining and, you know, ex telling people about the opportunity as much as I should. How come? Let's see if you're honest. See. Just because I haven't. How had... come? Because I'm not comfortable doing it. I'm not at the top of the world. I'm not the number one person in the company. I've never built a business before. That's, dude, that's okay. Yeah. But you have to start saying, dude, I'm not comfortable with this. Yeah. Because people can't read your mind. I can read your mind because I've been doing this forever. Yeah. So I know what you're thinking before you say it. But you have to say, I'm just not comfortable, dude. I've never built a business. So for you, if you saw me and we're at the same steakhouse, you'd be uncomfortable talking to me. Not because you're not a good dude, not because you're not smart, because it's new to you. And God forbid I ask you a question. But all you have to communicate to people is, hey, I have this opportunity. I'm 22, no big bills. I'm able to make a grand or two a week. I'm not really, I could be working harder, but I'd love to show you what we do. What's the greatest part of the business you're in right now? If, if I were to say to you, Nick, give me the best thing about your business currently, what would be your answer? One thing, if you're pitching me on it, one thing about it. There's no, I mean, there's no right, like totally dead wrong answer. I'm just- Independent. What, independence, okay. And flexibility. Flexibility, those are good. The best answer is it depends on who the person is, right? Yeah, of course. Because for me, the best, in my opinion, from a business standpoint, is supply and demand. Every business comes down to mother freaking supply and demand. Do I have more people to talk to? Do I have more leads than I can get to? Do, the number one thing we have is we have leads. Cold calling, cold knocking sucks. That's the first thing you should say to everybody. Yeah. Second thing is supply and demand. What if I gave you an industry? that we'd never run out of people to talk to. Because if there's 300 million people in America, I don't know exactly how many there are, if there's that many, roughly, and 70% of them say they don't have enough life insurance, don't have any, that means I have hundreds of millions of people to get to, I couldn't even get to them. Your great, great, great grandkids, we couldn't get through them all, Yep. ever. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And also, you'd be really good under deposition. You ever been deposed? You ever been arrested? No. Okay, you'd be really good if you got arrested. Because you don't talk, you just, you're very, you know what I mean? Me, I'm like, fuck you, lawyer. Fuck you, lawyer. Fuck, because I'll talk. I talk, because I'll say something stupid in a minute. You just are very composed. That's good and bad, yep. but it's making me be a mind reader. Yep. And I'm not a mind reader. It's okay to say, I get uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't get comfortable around anybody. Dude, that's weird, because everybody does. Yeah. Everybody. Of course. Yeah. But you have to be honest with you. Yeah. More animated. Mm -hmm. Have more fun. Enjoy yourself. I don't want you to smoke weed before you dial, but I want you to act like you smoke weed before you dial. Get a little more animated. Have some fun with things. You're such a great dude. Yeah. And start talking. You know how you get good at recruiting? You ask everybody. Dude, I was recruiting people I had no business talking to. I went to this restaurant, and I said to my buddy, I'm going to recruit that guy. He goes, do you know who he is? I go, how the fuck do I know who he is? I have no idea who he is. I had my wife insurance license for like two weeks. He's like, dude, he owns the biggest waste management company in the country. And I was like, I don't even know, because my buddy talks a lot, so I don't believe. But I knew he had money. Yeah. So I stumbled my ass over there. I'm like, hey, man, my name is Sean. I told the guys I knew his name. So my buddy over here, he's like, good to meet you. I said, man, y'all got a minute? I'd love to tell you about something I'm doing. And the guy looks at me like I'm a, a halfway, okay? So I do that. It goes absolutely nowhere. He's nice, but never asked my information. And then four years later, I open a waste management business. And I'm looking for a place to dump. And I got this dude's cell phone number because I had the balls to ask for it. He never sold life insurance. They made tens of millions of dollars a year in their waste, probably more than that, in their waste management business. My point is, the more I talked to people I knew would say no, the more comfortable I got with everybody. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. See? I feel like for me, sometimes I'm picking and choosing who I think would be best, but everyone, you don't know until you, you, know, you try. You have to start making a fucking mess. Yeah. Here's your chessboard. You're like... What do I do next? Fucking pick something. Make a move. Shit. Yo, checkmate. Fuck it, I lost. Let's play again. Dude, life is full of failures. Yeah. 
You're over here. We're like, I don't, I'm going to pick and choose. I'm going to pick my spots. I'm going to, I'm going to have some trepidation. I'm going to be very smart and calculate in my business. And I'm like a raccoon on methamphetamine. I'm going. I'm going to fuck up. I'm going to make a mistake here. And then you, do you know why I do that? The number one reason I'm, I act that way, and I do enjoy doing it, but the why I act that way in business? Because it doesn't really matter that much? Because I want other people to see it. Yeah. And I want the people that I work with to know it's okay to fall on your face. I want the people I work with to know it's okay to, to make a mistake. I want the people to know that I work with to go like, shit, yeah, I, 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 yeah, that's no big deal. Like, hey, he really screwed up. Like, he really, he shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Man, he made a bad decision. Man, he took out a new company. Shit, look what he did with Leeds. He tried a new system. It didn't even work. Shit's been down for a week. And I go, my bad, but I make it right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Dude, it's in there. There is a businessman trying to break out of that cage. Mm -hmm. Let him out. Yeah. So you're going to be here when I come in all the time, right? Of course. No hiding back at home with E and Gary on your, on your, on your dark web Zooms. No. No more of that? No. All right. I appreciate you. Appreciate Guys, I'm telling you, you have to learn how to talk to people. What a great dude. You find what people can get better at, but you have to care about them. Yep. Because people try to have conversations. They've done it to me. They've tried to have conversations with me. Like, I worked at UPS. When Kevin Trudeau got in my face and screamed and yelled, I was cool with it. Because Kevin's goal was always, he thought I'd stay at UPS forever and have a good career. He wanted me to get better. When um, this guy Ray did it, I wanted to punch Ray in his fucking mouth. I mean, I didn't, but I wanted to punch him. And when Dave did it, I wanted to punch him in his mouth. Yeah. You know, because I'm like, they didn't care about me at all. They just did it to show off. So Kevin, I'd go, got it, yes, sir. Rad be like, I heard you. Did you hear me? I'm like, don't fucking push me, Ray. I fucking heard you. Like, I'll smack the fucking taste out of your mouth, Ray. So you threatening me. I'm like, I'm not fucking threatening you. I'm telling you to stop talking to me that way. Because he didn't care about me. Mm -hmm. Kevin was much, like, why did you do that? We need to move faster. Why is the preload down? What the fuck's this guy doing? I'm like, yes, sir. Because he cared about me. Yep. He was trying to get me to be better. And the reality is, I had a great company. I left the company and went, and got a different, I went a different direction. But had I stayed, I learned more about business in six months from Kevin that I had learned my pre, I, like I learned a ton about how to run. He grew, promoted himself real fast throughout the company. He did very well and good for him. But these other guys didn't know that I knew they didn't care about me. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Of course. So when people know how good a dude you are, because you have to be able to confront and make yourself uncomfortable before you can do it to other people. Yeah, for sure. All right. And I, and I think for me, um, it's just, you know, continuing to work hard. One thing about me, I'm never going to give up. And dude, I, I'm just very competitive. No doubt about it. And all that's great, but you still have to do these other things to make you uncomfortable. You still have to be more animated in the way you talk. You still have to push people harder. You still have to be quicker in your responses. You still have to have more fun with what you're doing. Does that make sense? I, yeah. Dude, the work part I totally get. You're, you're going to keep working your ass off and you're very competitive. But great for you will be six, seven, eight, nine, ten grand a week yeah. because of how good you are. So, hey, if you like this and you like Hot C, watch what we got. Like, subscribe, share. Nick's a stud. So if you're looking to be a life insurance business, he's a great dude. Hey, good, super good dude. And if you go, man, I, I don't know if I would be that. I'm a little bit, like, laid back. My man right here. I don't know if I'd be good at sales. My man right here. You can hit him up. You can find him. We'll tag him here. Share this with somebody who needs to hear it. It's what Hot Seat's all about. But I appreciate you, Nick. Thanks for jumping on. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. You got it, brother.